In a forest garden like this, as in a real natural forest, the plants grow on all different levels, and beneath the soil they have all different root depths, and it's a mix of all different families of plants. And they have all these different forms reaching up into the sky, having their own little niche for competition. Because of that diversity, in a system like this, the potential for cooperation between the species is maximized, and meanwhile, the potential for competition between them is minimized, because they all have different strategies for getting what they need. They all have different forms for capturing the sun and different root depths for getting nutrients. But in a monoculture like this, all the plants are exactly the same height, all the plants have exactly the same root depth, and all the plants have exactly the same nutrition and water requirements. This is the ultimate way to maximize the competition between the plants. And because there's only one species here, it also minimizes all the potential for cooperation. Hi, I'm Mike Hogue of Lily House Permaculture. And in this video, we'll discuss the principles that Mother Nature herself uses to avoid competition and maximize cooperation in natural ecosystems. And we'll learn how we can apply those same principles in our gardens. The first thing that we can do to minimize the competition between our plants is to make sure we're using plants that have varied root depths. For example, in the pictures you see here, we have plants with shallow roots and alliums with bulb roots that stay close to the surface, uh, mixed with plants with deep tap roots. Here we can see exactly that situation. On the left we have arugula with its shallow root and a bulb to the right of that, and a lettuce that is bolted to the right of that. And finally at the end here we have a carrot. As you can see, all of these have slightly different root depths and draw most of their nutrients from different areas of the soil. We have the same situation in our hedgerow, where we've interplanted deep tap-rooted rugosa roses next to shallow-rooted cane fruit like the blackberries and elderberries you see here. The root of the Asian pear is spreading and goes down to a moderate sort of level whereas the blackberry root just moves across the surface of the soil, typically only having very shallow roots. In this way, we have roots at all different depths, which both avoids competition and helps to stabilize the soil better. A second factor that we want to take into consideration is to use different plant families instead of having all of one plant in one bed. We'd prefer to avoid interplanting plants like tomatoes and peppers and potatoes, for example, because all of those plants are in the same family, have the same nutrient requirements, and the same susceptibility to disease. We can use the same idea to take advantage of time, to make sure that we're planting plants that won't compete in time because they have different periods of growth. In the images you're seeing now, we have uh, valerian interplanted with marshmallow. Valerian is an overwintering ephemeral, whereas marshmallow makes most of its growth in mid of summer. Ephemerals are plants that are only around through the winter or early spring. In this guild, we see a variety of spring ephemerals planted, and we're going to look at this guild over the course of the whole summer, moving from these early ephemerals, like the bulbing onions that we see here, into mid-spring, when we have a variety of spring vegetables that are starting to become available, and eventually right into summer, when a whole new set of things become available, and finally fall. With good planning, we can actually get three or four harvests out of the same area of space without a lot of competition. 
and the same concept holds true for competition for light. In this shot, we see a tall, feathery fennel interplanted with lower vegetables that can thrive in its light shade and still won't compete with it for the sun. The classic example of this is the Three Sisters Garden of Corn, Beans, and Squash. The corn has a tall form that reaches up to the sky to get the sun, while, meanwhile, the squash covers the ground with large, photosynthesizing, almost solar panel-like leaves that can catch the sun and mulch the ground at the same time. Finally, later in the season, the beans begin to grow up the stalks of corn after they've already pretty much reached their maturity. The beans fix nitrogen, also helping the corn. But those three sisters together go beyond merely inhabiting the same space and minimizing their competition. They actually cooperate to such a degree that they're stronger together than they are apart. They actually function in a way like a little ecosystem. In permaculture, we call that a guild. In the next video, we're going to discuss designing guilds, plantings that function like ecosystems.